Hi, uh, I'm Shuntarai from Tokyo University. I'm the last speaker from Japan. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, talking about, about our recent study. The title of the talk is Deep Neural Network Detects Quantum Phase Transition in DF 2000Q. First of all, I will tell you take home messages. The first one is neural network can be the good estimator of detecting the critical point under quantum phase transition. Uh, if we don't know the other parameter of this model, which we treat now, how do we estimate the critical point? This result uh, may lead to the solution of that. In this presentation, we treat uh, one dimensional transfer speed Ising model, which has uh, Fermatic interactions. Neural network can detect the indication of the phase transition from finite size system and the finite temperature. Uh, this is a machine learning approach to detect the quantum phase transition. And the second one is the DM machine has a little positive bias. Uh, this effect gets larger with no magnetic fields. Uh, Dr. King performed great talk, uh, but uh, XY model is difficult, so complicated for me. So we treat simple model for now in the DF devices. So please relax. Uh, and third, there is uh, the better impro improvement of post processing is needed in order to the perform the reverse in Monte Carlo. So these are experiments mental result we talk today. So let's move on to the first topic about machine learning. I briefly explain about the neural network. Uh, neural network is a kind of a supervised or unsupervised machine learning. Uh, supervised learning is a machine learning task of estimating a function from level data. A neural network imi imitates a complicated function to relate input to output by repeating uh, linear or nonlinear transformation. For example, this is the MNIST data set. This data, this, this data set has a consists of input vector and the class data. So, and uh, D is the number of data and N class is the number of classes. We explain uh, about the running in neural network. A neural network uh, predicts, um, predicts the level of the input data, and we, a neural network calculates the loss function between prediction and label. Uh, to minimize the loss function, we update the parameter with this rule. W is a weighted parameter. By doing so, neural network extracts a feature about the out output from the input value. So uh, let's move on to our approach to detect quantum phase transition. This is our approach. Uh, we don't uh, some study to detect the phase transition, but uh, in our approach, uh, we don't teach the critical point to the neural network. This is a uh, uh, we treat we treat a one-dimensional transfer speed Ising model. This is a Hamiltonian. Uh, J is an uh, interaction spin to spin, uh, sigma iz, uh, sigma ix, uh, power matrices. Uh, and the gamma is the strength of the transverse field. So uh, we prepare the spin configuration. To prepare the spin configuration, we have performed the Suzuki Torta decomposition so we can obtain the effective, effective Hamiltonian like that. M is the Torta number. Uh, and we prepare the data set like this uh, by using uh, quantum Monte Carlo method. And the neural network predicts the strength of the transverse field from spin configurations. And we regard this problem as a multi classification problem, and we discretize the strength of, of the transverse field like this. Through the learning process, the neural network runs a feature of the strength of the transverse field from spin configurations. And after learning, the extract feature about the strength of the, of the transverse field is uh, reflected in the weight parameter of a neural network. So let's see this figure. 
So, and uh, WP is a weight parameter connected to the unit P in the output layer. And the WP is, uh, uh, has a feature of the strength of the transfer speed at class P, yeah? So this is a visualization of the output from output layer to the uh, hidden layer. So uh, before learning, the, uh, the, the, the distribution of WP is uniform, but after learning, uh, the distribution of P is conditioned by the spin configuration sigma and the strength of the transverse field. Uh, in the previous study, uh, okay, uh, and you can see this uh, around this region there are boundary. So uh, this boundary corresponds to the critical point in this previous study. So uh, uh, and to estimate the, this boundary quantitatively, so we define the new order parameter of neural network. Uh, this is a new order parameter based on neural network. This is an uh, average of a weight parameter at a class P, yeah? So gamma of P is the uh, strength of a transfer speed at a class P. And we calculate the order parameter at, uh, about the different kinds of throttle number. So this is an experimental setting. And we set the number of spins that N equals uh, 40. And uh, the interaction is uh, ferromagnetic, yeah? So? And we calculate the uh, order parameter like this. So the horizontal axis denotes the strength of, of the transfer speed, and the vertical axis denotes the, uh, this order parameter. We regard uh, this function, uh, and we fit this function, and we regard this function sharply changes uh, as a strength as a critical point. So let's see this figure, uh, let's see the table. So this original model has quantum phase transition at gamma equal one, exactly. Uh, this is a result, uh, the, this is a result of the place of the critical point from this, uh, from each total numbers of, of data. So uh, from this data, uh, we can obtain the place of the critical point. It's uh, consistent with the exact, exact solution. In this result, we sampled the spin configuration by using quantum Monte Carlo, and we can extend this method to the DF machine. So let's move on the sampling method to the, uh, by using the machine. This is a sampling method with reverse annealing. And this is a uh, standard, standard uh, no, no. This is a typical annealing, reverse annealing schedule. So in the reverse annealing, we can set uh, any initial classical states. So in this example, we uh, set input as input vector as uh, all spins up, and uh, and then we reduce the annealing parameter s like that, and after that, and we pause this system and uh, evolve uh, the system for some time to equilibrate the system, and after that we suddenly increase the annealing parameter s from target s to the s equal one. This is called quench. So by doing quench, we can remain the effect of the transfer speed. And we can obtain these spin configurations, and we can utilize this uh, result, the, this previous, re previous result, as the next uh, initial states. So, uh, reverse annealing can realize a chain sampling, so, and uh, therefore we can realize a pseudo Markov chain Monte Carlo. Uh, by using this sampling method, uh, we sample spin configurations from the devices. This is the first result. Uh, this is the Hamiltonian we treat now, and the A of S and the B of S is the uh, uh, energy scale of the machine. And this is a uh, uh, order parameter, new order parameter based on neural network. And this is an experimental setting with we sample spin configuration from S equal 0.01 uh, 
to the one point zero. And set, we said the, the number of spins are 64. And this is a visualization of the round, round weight parameter, horizontal, horizontal axis denotes the annual parameter S, and the vertical axis denotes the weight parameter. And we calculate this uh, order parameter and fit it like this. So uh, we can also get obtain the uh, critical point at uh, S equal uh, 0.382. Uh, but uh, in order to uh, more precisely investigate this uh, quantum phase transition, and we perform quantum simulation by using the machine. And we utilize the reverse annealing Monte Carlo method to investigate the quantum phase transition in the machine. So, and we prepare three initial classical states like that. First one is the uh, order state, so the magnetization is one, so the all spins up. And the second one is the uh, order negative, so the all spins down. And the last one is the uh, random, so the magnetization is uh, close to zero, so all spins random. And we can set the reverse sign schedule as follows. And we can we calculate these quantity, physical quantities, for example, uh, magnetization and the bin ratio and having distance from the initial classical states. And we uh, we take average the seven thousand samples at a certain target S. This is the result of the magnetization. Uh, the left figure denotes uh, the result of the random initial value. And uh, we have performed the three kinds of the number of spins like that. And the average magnetization gets, gets close to uh, m from m equal zero to m equal one as an parameter s increases. And we can see the finite side effect, but also we don't add any magnetic field Curiosity, the average of magnetization tends to be positive. So the machine has a little positive bias with no magnetic field from this result. And, uh, and also, we can see the magnetization decreases from this region. So this is a freezing region. So the spin state stops evolving. Yeah. And the right figure denotes the effect of the initial value. A blue point is random, random order, uh, initialized random, and the green is uh, initialized ordered, and the red is uh, initialized ordered negative. In, in, each, uh, in any initial states, the phase transition or freezing, freezing behavior happen, but the, uh, we can see the red point uh, is approaching uh, from uh, m equal zero to the m equal one, uh, in spite of the m equal minus one bias. And uh, in addition, the positive bias is relatively strong, but much weaker than the local magnetic field. The next result is a bin ratio, like that. M is a magnetization. To detect the place of the critical point, we calculate the Binder ratio. And we can see that this parameter gradually decreasing, gradually decreases from this point. Strictly speaking, we can't regard this point as a critical point, but this result is a little consistent with the result of neural network. And please remember, and this original model has second order phase transition. But this behavior uh, is not uh, different from the original model. So and, uh, we can't see the cross point. So this behavior is similar to the model which has a weak uh, first order phase transition or no phase transition. I wonder, I wonder that this behavior is related to, to the positive bias. And we investigate it, and uh, this result is work in progress. 
Uh, the last result is having distance from initial uh, classical states. So left one is uh, initialized uh, ordered, and the right one is initialized uh, negative. And we can see the critical region and the freezing region in the uh, both having distance result. When the anine parameter S is less than the critical point, the spin state were uh, disordered by the quantum fluctuation. So having distance is large. From the left figure, the humming distance gradually decreasing. It means that the spin, spin states are becoming up. In the freezing region, uh, the spin state does not evolve, so it doesn't change from the initial state, so the humming distance is zero. And the red see the right figure, you can see the interesting behavior. In spite of the initial state bias m equal one, m equal minus one, the humming distance is getting larger from this from from this point. It means that the spin states gradually becoming positive from the negative states. This is another another evidence of the positive bias in the DAV devices. So uh, finally, we summarize our presentation. We have shown that neural network can be the estimator of detecting the critical point and the quantum phase transition. Why, do, why does neural network work well? It's non-trivial. And the DM machine has little positive bias within our simulation. And uh, the better reverse annealing Monte Carlo is needed to perform, to improve the post-processing. And uh, Quantum simulation by using the machine is just getting started, so we have to increase the case studies now. That's all. Thank you for your attention. All right, thank you very much. We have time for one or two questions. So how exactly did you collect your data for the DWAV device? Did you use like different embeddings uh, and yeah, spin okay. reversal uh, mm. transformations? OK, uh, do I use, uh, did, did I use embedding? OK, uh, I use that. Uh, this result is, uh, by uh, this result, uh, we use this, in this result we use the embedding, but uh, no, no, no emitting result is consistent with this result, yeah. All right, do we have a second question? Ah. So these plots are uh, very surprising to me because you get almost all spins aligned when you quench them from intermediate transverse field. So usually when there is some Hamiltonian transverse field, there should be at least some um, fluctuations, right? But here, you measure almost all spins up. So a little bias is not enough to explain it. So yeah. I just, I'm kind, I guess I'm expressing that I'm incredulous of these results. Do you have an explanation why all of the spins that you measure after a relatively big transverse field are actually just pointing up? Uh, so, <laughs> I can't uh, catch you, catch your question, so please uh, ask me again slowly. So sorry. Well, I guess uh, so. First of all, uh, as far as I understood your uh, setup, yeah. Uh, if the system were in a Gibbs state, even with a little bias, yeah. And if the quench was instantaneous, then the magnetization yeah. wouldn't be uh, maximal. Is that correct? Correct. So uh, okay. I, I would expect the magnetization would be some of order of that, that bias or the transverse field. Mm. So not, not that big. Yeah. And the fact that you're seeing a big magnetization seems that something's gone completely wrong. Yeah. Right. So do you have any idea what could have gone wrong here? Uh, uh, do you have any idea? Um, hold on. Uh, I don't uh, correctly answer that, so... Uh. So yeah, maybe that's uh, a discussion you can...